And hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'm actually starting, I think, a whole... Oh, no, it just turned 7 o'clock, so it's time to start. This is Unhindered by Coding. I'm Nick McPhee. Be here for two hours uh, doing tonight Advent of Code in Rust. Um, time for day three. We've, uh, we did day one and day two, each in their, their own two-hour session. Um, in a perfect world, we just keep like rolling through them one at a set, one session, one problem per session. Um, but that almost certainly is going to happen because apparently the problems get harder as we move along. But we're doing Advent of Code and Rust as a way of continuing to develop my Rust skills, um, and also just as a way to you know get my keep my programming chops honed. So, what is the problem today? The problem today, so I'm going to make this a little bigger, is, uh, so again, we have these elves, and they are moving, they're going to go on this adventure, and they need food, and so there's, and supplies, so there's all these questions about food and supplies, um, and in this case, we've got, they each have a rucksack, which has um supplies in it and the ruck each rucksack is divided into two large compartments and they're the same size and so the supply so each row in the input is a given elves rucksack and the letters represent different supplies so this rucksack has a little v a big j a little r a little w etc 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 um and the two compartments are just implied. So the first half of the characters are supplies in one half of the rucksack. The second half of the characters are supplies in the other half of the rucksack. Um, and so we're gonna need to take these strings and cut them in half. And the first half will be one rucksack. The second half will be the other rucksack. Now the important question is um, what they have in common. So where's that? Um, blah, blah, blah. Where, where do they talk about that actually? Uh, somewhere. Oh yeah. Um, well, somewhere they talk about the fact there should be only one character that appears in both compartments. Um, and our job is to find that character. Um, and char that characters can be converted to a priority. So little a through little z are 1 through 26. Big A through big Z are 27 through 52. Um, and so you have to find the item that appears in both compartments of each rucksack. Compute its priority, which is this number based on its um, character type. And then sum all those up. So we'll have a big input file, uh, which is right here. And how many lines, oh, go away, input thing. How many lines does this have? So we've got 300 inputs. So for each input, uh, we're gonna need to um, split it in half, find the, sh the shared character, convert that character to a priority, and then we should be good. So that's the battle plan. Um, so let's do that. So I've stubbed a little out. Um, so I've got our input file name. I have imported the anyhow stuff. Um, I'm assuming that we have a method of uh, function process rucksacks that takes an input file and returns the sum of priorities. We'll print that out and then we'll be done. And process, process rucksack currently reads the entire input file into a string, um, uh, failing if there's some kind of error. So our job now is to loop over all the lines, uh, split everything into the lines, loop over those, and um, split them in half, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so. Um, now we can say contents dot. Now I think there is a lines. So what does lines do for us? 
Um, it gives us an iterator of the lines of a string as string slices, which is exactly what we want. Um, so we'll use lines for this. Um, and so for each line, we need to process that rucksack. So I'm going to imagine that we have some function that processes rucksacks. And process rucksack is going to process rucksack is going to take a um, I'll say line stir and it's going to return a priority and the priorities are just small numbers so I'll say a U8 okay. So we're going to process rucksack and then we want to compute the sum of all of those, the sum of the priorities. Yes. So we want to sum and that actually should just solve the problem. Uh, ignoring the fact that we haven't implemented uh, process rucksack. Um, oh yeah, yeah, uh, right. We're returning a result here. Um, so I actually need this to, um, have, let's say, let priority equal, let's see, sum of priorities would be a better name, T's equal, and then I think we'll just shift both of you guys over. And then we will return sum of priorities. Yeah, since I'm returning a result type, I can't just return the U8. Oh, and this result type should be a U8 here. I don't need a U size. And priorities, I can't spell. Okay, cool. Um, so that gives us the... And if at any point you've got a question, I mean, if you're totally new to Rust, I'm probably moving pretty fast. Um, uh, also, if you've got any suggestions, I'm totally open to suggestions. So feel free to share if you've got anything to offer. So... Um, Cool. So we have our iterator, we get our sum. Now this probably, we want to be consistent about the error handling. That probably needs to be a U8, a result U8, which means uh, now, I think that actually now I can just return sum of priorities. I think that was actually really my mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really don't need this. Boom. And except I don't get. Oh, that's because actually. Oh, that's because I got a semicolon there. Yes. Um, I oh, actually, Ikapor, you were completely right. I was focused on the fact that each value will be pretty small, but there are three hundred of them, and that clearly is going to need something bigger. Yes, you're completely right. That would have burned me. Um. I could attempt to, I think, let's just go with U-size, because frankly, it's not important here to be trying to save some tiny amount of memory. Um, and, I mean, 300 times 50 uh, would be 60,000, so probably could have gotten away with a 16-bit, a U-16, but I don't think it's worth dwelling on. So, I could pour 
full marks to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now I think that all is structured. Um, we've got our results um, and we sum. It's cool that actually summing over an iterator of results gives us a result. Um, that's actually a pretty nifty property of sum uh, that I like a lot. And so now we need to process a rucksack, which means if we go back to the problem, we're going to have to basically cut each line in half. It's going to give us two parts. We need to find the common character. Um, I think I'm just going to do that with hash sets. Although, because then I can just intersect those sets. Um, that might be, it probably could be done purely in string land, but I sort of mentally I think of it as the intersection of two sets, so I'm going to just do hash sets. We find that character, and then we're going to have to convert that character to a priority. Um, so we're going to have to think about how to do that um, in a hot second. But first, let's do the splitting business. So um, now we can do split at, I think, would be good. It divides one slice into two at a given index. Um, and it returns a pair of string slices, which would be the first and the second half, which I think seem reasonable to me. Um, uh, I don't know what a split once do. Uh, splits the string of the first to current. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. I think split at was the right uh, choice. What is split n? An iterator over substrings of a string slice separated by care. Yeah, that's not what we want. So I think we'll go with split at. Actually, was was I getting the? I mean, I'm in getting the right thing. Split n separated by a pattern. Okay, yeah, we don't want that. So I think we'll say split at. Wah, wah, wah. And then we need to provide the size. So that's going to be line dot len divided by two. And so those would be the first half, let um, first and second be that. And I need a semicolon, and I should put it to do bang so it doesn't scream at me for not returning things. So there are my two slices. I need to turn those into let first set be hash set. Um, from iter. I wonder if I can do from first. Is that even going to do a thing? No, didn't like that. So we're not. We can't pass the slice in here. Um, now I think we can, if we make it a chars, if we make it an iterator, I think we can do from or not. Uh, Okay, momentary pause. I looked up something. Um, Rust hash set from stir slice. How about that?
So it should be if I say dot chars. Oh, it's from iter. That's my mistake. It's not from, it's from iter. And I wonder actually then if I, do I need the chars or will it automatically convert first to an iter for me? No, it will not. So I think I have to do dot chars. And now I need to say what kind of hash set I have. And actually, why is there a second type on hash set? That's fascinating. A random state. Seriously? Did I in what is random state here? And why do I need it? Huh. Random state. So this must be related to the hashing, he says, not being at all certain. Uh... Hmm. Type your so it says here, it implies that I can just provide a single thing. So maybe I can just provide a single thing. So maybe I just need to say that this is a hash set of char. Maybe that'll work. And yay, okay. Wow, that was a lot of faffing about. Now do I, I just want to convince myself I need, yeah I do. I think that if I had a string, capital S string, that I wouldn't need the chars. I think it would convert that to an iterator for me. But um, hash set from iter second chars. Boom. Okay, so now we have our two sets. So our shared item is going to be first set dot intersect intersection um, second set. Now that's going to give us, is that an iterator? Doop -a -doo. Um, intersection is what? Uh, yes, it looks like it's an, uh, oh, it's a hash set. Okay. No, it's an iterator and we can collect to make it into a hash set. Um, oh, and it's not liking that. Uh, oh, it wants a reference. Second set can just be a reference. Okay. I'll buy that. So then if that's an iterator, we ought to be able to say dot next question mark. And now shared item is, um, oh yeah, right. So, okay. So if I take the question mark out, um, I get an option back and I get an option because next might fail. Um, the intersection will just return an iterator, but that iterator could be empty, might have no items to iterate over um, because there is no common value. We are assuming there is exactly one. So the problem statement ensures that there is exactly one shared, cannot spell, item. So I ought to be able to 
Um, uh, boom. Say next. And we're using anyhow. Do, 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 do. So this result type here is from anyhow. And we can't just say question mark because if we do, the question mark would return, try to return an option here, but we're saying we want to return result. So the types don't line up, but we can say dot with context, which is an anyhow function that takes a uh, closure that gets evaluated if um, there is an error um, and then attaches that context to the error and then that will actually become, it will convert the option into an anyhow error and we can question mark it uh, here. So we want to have something like format bang um, uh, was no, let's say there was no common character in uh, first and second now am I going to get a oops I don't have a close curly brace am I going to get a borrowing problem oh I don't how nice. Thought maybe I'd, but I guess we don't take ownership here and we send in a borrow here. So these are, I think, both okay. So that's cool. Zippity doo da. Zippity a. Uh, and then we need. Uh, to, we've got our shared item. So now we have to convert that to a priority and that's what we're going to return. Oh, we could just do this with, um, some kind of matching conversion stuff I'm trying to decide whether I want to actually because I could do something nice I could oh but this that's gonna get complicated I was saying I could create a priority type and then have this return a priority um, and then this would be a priority but then I'd have to implement some on my priority type and that seems like kind of a hassle. Um, so I think we'll just be blunt about it here and then see where we go. So question is, can I use, so can I convert? So I think there's two questions. One is, can I do some kind of, uh, oh, you know what? I think, I think that if I do something kind of dumb here, Clippy will help me out. So I could say if a less than or equal to shared item and, sh oh, I can't spell shared item and shared item is Z, then um, else, and I need to dereference that. And then I need to convert shared item to a number. Now, does that work in Rust the way I think it does? Uh, convert char to 
int. I don't want that. to Unicode. Okay, so it is just as. Okay, that's what I thought. So, um, so we can cast to a U32 and we should be okay. So we want to cast shared item as u32 minus a as u32 now do they do it it's one uh one through 26 so i have to add one else shared item as u32 minus capital a as u32 plus one and get rid of to do and oh right we need to put those in okays And yeah, I was afraid of that. We're saying U32, but it wants a U size. So I have to, can I actually say U size here? I bet I can't. Um, maybe actually I just want U32 instead of U size. Maybe that would simplify my life. Because I don't really care a lot about the type of integer values that are being returned. Okay. Um, so we f split the thing into two halves. Oh, actually I'm gonna put an assertion here. Um, First dot len is the same as second dot len. Uh, and then we convert the hash sets or the slices to hash sets. Um, we get the shared item by computing their intersection and um, calling next. Now that doesn't ever check that there's exactly one. It'll fail if there's less than one, but it's going to just toddle along if somehow there's more than one. Uh, we could check that if we gave the intersection a name, then we could call next on it again. I don't think I'm going to bother with that right now. Um, and then if Shared item is between little a and little z. We'll take its Unicode value, subtract the Unicode value of little a, which would be, gives us a number between zero and 25. So we add one to get one to 26. And then the same thing in the otherwise case, but with capital A. And that might work. I don't know, let's find out. Um, cargo run minus minus bin day o three and oh I'm not in my Rust directory. Do 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 do. Oh, there is a tiny error. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, let me look at the problem again. Find the item type that appears in both compartments. What is the sum of the prior? Oh, it's 27 through 52. That's not a tiny error. That's like a pretty big error. Um, so in fact, 
this shouldn't be plus one, this should be plus 27. Right, because if I had left it alone, I would have values between one, one and 26 for both of these. I wouldn't have different values for capital letters than little letters. I don't know, I Kapoor, if that was the error that you were thinking of, but it is certainly an error, and I'm hoping it's the error you were thinking of. Don't know. Um, uh, let's see. So let's run it again. And we get a substantially larger number, which is not surprising because we basically have doubled half of the um, priority values. It's a little weird that it's um, the sum is more than doubled. That seems, I mean, that could just be a property of the, um, good to know, uh, a property of the um, distribution. But let's plug it in and see what happens. One of the nice things about stuff like this is you can always submit and see if you're wrong. Hey, that's the right answer. So thank you, Ikapur, for catching that um, so that we didn't have an incorrect submission on our conscience. So very cool. And that was in half an hour. Doot, doot. Um, oh yeah, actually, before we do part two, I want to commit, but I also want to cargo... Clippy and see what sort of noise Clippy's making. Um, oh, so they recommend collect. Oh, that's interesting. So first charge collect as a hash set. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I have any great clarity as to why one would prefer collect to from iter, but I won't argue. Um, so we can do that. So they're suggesting that that would go here. In fact, I don't even need, since I've specified the type on the left side, well, actually, then maybe I just don't need that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so... Dot collect hash set. Okay. That's cool. Now let's run it again. Make sure we get the same number. We do. That's good. Run Clippy again. Oh, Matt takes care of Clippy. Really? Because I thought Clippy was going to fuss about this. So question is, can we do ranges of over characters wah, wah, wah. rust range over of characters oh you can do a range char hmm Oh, actually, I think this person was asking exactly my question. Ah. So they match with dot, dot, dot. Interesting. Well, that actually would be... Maybe that's a nice way to do that. Huh. So let's contemplate that. So we would say match 
shared item. We have a dot dot dot. Z. And then we'd have this. And I want to clean that mess up because repeating that twice does not make me lots of happy. So I guess we could just do underscore and then this guy. We could probably make for better error checking if we actually checked for capital A to capital Z and then had a default. Yeah, let's do that actually. Because that does smell like something that's gonna I'm gonna regret later. Um, uh, and we can bail um, illegal shared item bap boop boop bop shared item. Boom. Let me get rid of that. And let's confirm. Oh, hey. Range patterns are deprecated. Well. That's awkward. Um, okay, bail. I know how to fix that one. That's just an import. Range patterns are deprecated. Well, well. Oh, I think it's dot dot equal, isn't it? I think they, they went from dot dot being, so dot dot is inclusive on the left and exclusive on the right. Dot dot equal is inclusive on both ends. Initially, they'd use three dots to indicate inclusive on both ends. But I think somebody pointed out quite rightly that it was awfully easy to mistake two dots for three dots. Um, and that the dot dot equal syntax gives you better clarity. So... I totally buy that. Um, uh, what, what, read, read, read. what is the problem? Does bail... Do I just need to... Yeah, okay. Just didn't like having that expression in there. So let's run this again. Yeah, you could actually um, put the OK around the whole thing. Um, well, no, because I have the bail here, then you'd have an OK wrapping the bail, and that would be bad. So I don't think I can do that unless I just want to assume... Um, that I always have a legal character and skip the bail step. Um, so I don't think I can do that. I'm not thrilled about the repetition between these two lines. So I'm going to, I think, do something about that. Let me rerun it. Just want to make sure everything is still correct. And let's redo Clippy for fun. Yeah. So then I'm gonna get rid of this. These are almost identical. They differ only in the starting character and the offset. Uh, so I could make a little function char to priority um, C, if it's a reference to a char, and we'll return a U32, and, uh, oh, and we need the offset, um, offset char, um, do I care? I just passed the char in. Um, and so we'll say star C as U32 
minus offset char as u32 uh, so we'll do that and then this becomes char to priority shared item and little a oops not a period a comma do 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 bop yeah that works um char to priority shared item and capital a plus 27. so i think that should work And I, it would, I mean, I could have passed in this as another argument and then had this actually have the okay in it and return the result type. And then I, I think it's probably six of one, half a dozen the other. Do you want to add an argument to this? so that you can then avoid the repetition of the okays or do you have this just return the priority um oh i guess that's true really the priority does include this doesn't it um foo yeah because otherwise this name is wrong. And I don't know that there's a good name for what we have here. Um, and that's maybe a sign that I should pass it in. Ah, poop. Okay, I think you're right. Uh, Kapoor, I think you win a prize. Um, offset. Uh, Val? I don't know. I feel like I'm struggling with names here. Feel free to suggest better ones. Then this would be okay around all of that. Boom. And then this would become comma one and comma 27. And would no longer have the okay at the front. Oh, I need to type. Uh, sure, fine, U32. Um, so now we are actually computing the priority. So char to priority is correct as a name. I don't know that offset char and offset val are great names. I think they're not great names. I don't immediately think of a better one. I'm open to suggestions, but I don't know that I've got any great thoughts on the matter. Um, but let's um, Clippy happy. Oh, Clippy's got thoughts. Let's make sure that it runs correctly first. Yep. Okay, so Clippy, what are you up, up to here, bud? Um, oops, wrong scroll. Charter priority could be a constant function. Okay, that's an easy thing. Const. Um, consider passing by value instead. Sure. Um, I did wonder about that. If I do that, though, then I will have to star both of these because they are... Um, you know, actually, maybe the thing to do is to let shared item equal star shared item. Then I can lose that and lose. Yeah, then all those all that starring goes away because I only needed to really dereference it once. 
Um, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, an offset char. Uh, um, okay, so I think that's an improvement. Um, I, I'm, I'm not... I don't use the shadowing uh, in Rust as much as I probably should. This idea of like reusing a name um, and changing its type I think is actually really cool and um, uh, not something that I think I think of as often as I should. Okay. This function's return value is unnecessarily wrapped by result. That is true. It is unnecessarily wrapped by result in some sense. Um, huh. So Clippy thinks that since there's no way to fail here, Clippy doesn't want us to have the okay there, which is interesting. And it does make sense, if you look at that function in isolation, having it return a result doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, here, a result makes sense because we need the question mark right here and the bail here. And, but that involves so this function makes more sense this way. But now we're going to have to OK. Is there like a quick fix that will do that? Maybe. Oh, there is. How nice. Um, ah. But of course, part of the reason I created chart of priority was to not duplicate the OKs. And now we're still duplicating the OKs. Well, fine. I will bow to Clippy's greater wisdom. Clippy, happy now? Yes. And we still get the same value. Woo! So I think I'm going to call that a win. And we're going to move on to part two. Unless somebody's got... Um, Oh, so you think if bail returns that I can put the OK around all of this and skip the OK here? I hadn't thought about the possibility that bail has returned, so it doesn't it doesn't return this value later. Oh, interesting. Look at that. Good job. I could pour full marks. Assuming it works. Hey, look at that. Well done. Does Clippy have a problem with it? No, Clippy's like all happy campers. Well done. That was very nice. I like that. I didn't think about the fact that Bail might sort of return out early and therefore free us up from having to worry about that. <coughs> so awesome. We managed to avoid repeating the OK. Um, that is very cool. That is very cool. I like that a lot. Okay, awesome. So I think we move. Oh, I commit, 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 commit. Um, so solve part one of day oh three. Boom. Okay. Now we read part two. Okay. 
So, uh, the elves are divided into groups of three. Each elf carries a badge that identifies their group. For, each, for efficiency within each group of three elves, the badge is the only item type carried by all three elves. So if a group's badge is type capital B, then all three elves will have an item capital B somewhere in their rucksack. Um, the problem is that someone forgot to put this year's updated authentic sticker on the badges. All the badges need to be pulled out of the rucksack so that new authenticity stickers can be attached. And nobody wrote down which item type corresponds to each group's badges. The only way to tell which item type is the right one is by finding the one item type that is common between all three elves in each group. Each set of three lines is a group. Okay. So um, we'll have to divide the lines into groups of three. Um, and... In the first one, the only thing is lowercase r. In the second one, the only common thing is capital Z. Uh, priorities for these items must still be found to organize the sticker attachment efforts. Here there are 18. Oh, so it's the same scoring system. And then we sum across all of the groups. So find the item type that corresponds to the badge of each three-up group. What is the sum of the priorities? Okay. So, we're going to need to group the lines into groups of three, and then convert the whole line to a set, and then intersect the three sets to get the single character. So that part's just going to change a fair bit. Um, so, process rucksacks really probably ought to become process groups. Ba -ba -ba. Rename process. Oh, well, fine. Groups. And so, we, these are really the long. Uh, no, there's the lines. Now, I think there is a way in the iter land, rust iter group or partition group. Um, partition. Aha. I'm guessing that. Go away. Bet there's partition or something down here. Partition. No, not what I wanted. That's sort of looking for things that make something true or false. Um, array chunks? Is it chunks? That's a nightly only experimental. Well, that doesn't work. Um... Is there um so I could copy the file. I mean that's a fair question. I'm actually at the moment not because I'm just kind of counting on um GitHub. Well Git, not GitHub the Git history to have the old stuff. Um, maybe I don't like that. I don't know. I guess so far, I think the, f I think the other two, that's wrong. I want to be here. I think the other two, I still have, where's main? Here's main. Yeah, I didn't actually save. On day two, I don't actually have day part one um, unless I roll back the GitHub history. Um, uh, but maybe I should be um, trying to save that. Um, oh, let's see. I just said don't. So I could... I could just, yeah, 
So maybe let's back up, make sure, so let's just, uh, oh, I haven't saved. Okay. So save as um, day three, part two. There we go. So that'll work. Um, and then we have, I mean, I probably ought to rename this as the day three, part one. Oops, not that. Day three here. Rename day three part one. Okay. Cool. I want to guess now I probably need to uh I can just add, amend that into the previous commit. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't need part one. Oh yeah, we were looking up how to break things into chunks. Um, so chunks seem like that was the right idea, but it's not available. Uh, next chunk is nightly only. Hermph. It's got to be, I would think, a nice way to do this, but maybe I'm up a tree. So many nice things. Hmm, rust. Divide. Iterator into... At least you'd like the word chunks. Okay, here we go. So there's a chunks method that can be called on a vector. But I don't have a vector. Aha! There is, in the inner tools crate, there is a chunks method. Hmm. Yeah. And so we could do take. Yeah, I thought about that. We could take groups of three out. But then I have a while loop. Who wants a while loop? Chunks seem like they would be much nicer. Um... So maybe we just suck it up and do iter tools. Uh, cargo add iter tools. I'm a fan of using the things that exist. Do, do, do. Apologies now. And of course the first compile is going to be like stupid slow because it will have to I assume compile another new 50,000 crates because iter tools is given how big it's proving to be on the download. Probably has a lot of dependencies and yeah. So actually I'm going to just run cargo build here in the background while I'm thinking. Um, so we should then be able to, according to the internet, say dot chunks, dot chunks of three, 
and we probably have to import something. And now we're going to need to process group. Do, do, do. Uh, I'm just going to. FN process group. Uh, so we're going to have chunks returns into chunks, which is basically an iterator. Oh, it's an into. Um, huh. Interesting. Can I? Do that. Um, to do bang, put up, put up. Can't find that type. Yeah, so we get import iter. Ah, uh, so many options. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's try. Huh. What is what I want? Um well maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want the thing that chunks returns. Um We could, s but I feel like if we say into iterator, it should be able to convert it to an iter here. Um, I don't know. Let's try um, let's try standard slice iter. And I'm sure it'll yell at us if we are doing something dumb. Boom. Into chunks, iterator, bow. Let me come back here, cargo build. Okay, map can't be called on into chunks lines due to unsatisfied trait bounds. Into chunks doesn't satisfy into chunks lines. So somehow lines isn't converting. Properly. Hmm. So it's not, I was kind of hoping it would auto convert into an iter for me, but it's not doing that. Um, so this is gonna be an
into chunks is based on group by. Is group by an option that I should have been paying attention to? I think not. I think group being oh group shot by is not even here. Oh yeah, well. I think grouping takes a predicate. Yeah, so group grouping's not gonna be what we want. Anyway. Okay. So we have um chunks gives us into chunks which actually let's look at an example um actually there was one right here wasn't there um oh but this is with a for loop i don't really want a for loop um if i can help it iter tools Uh, Rust iter tools chunk c dot chunks. Okay, an iterable that can chunk the iterator, and then they have it. They do a for loop again. Well, I don't want a for loop. Pleh. Um. So that's not really very helpful. Oh, that's not the latest version. Let's go to the latest version to make sure that things haven't changed. No, it doesn't look like. It implements iterator into iterator. Uh, iterator's element type is chunk. So, process group should be a chunk of what? So it's going to need to be a chunk of line. Does that even work? Let's go back to here and recompile where we can see things. So method cannot be called on into chunks lines due to unsatisfied trait bounds. Into chunks doesn't satisfy into chunks std stir lines iterator. Into chunks, which is required by mute chunks. Um, We can do the expanded version on the map to see what types it uses. I think that sounds like a good idea. I'm not sure I fully understand what you are suggesting. When you say the expanded version on the map, I don't know that I know what that means, but I do feel like if the map would tell me more about what I'm after, that would be helpful. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Because then we would get types on these things. Yes. Bingo. Um, so we would have group 
and then we would have process group group and now it will tell us things uh-huh uh and let's say i don't let's just do something totally stupid what does this tell us so cannot be called on into chunks so it's like the map's not happy oh is it ah chunks doesn't return an iterator it returns something that can be made into an iterator and so that's the problem i think is that map wasn't happy so i probably have to say into iter oh now ah so that was the problem and it was trying to tell me that that chunks wasn't iterable but it could be made into something that was iterable and so into iter gives us chunks of lines um and now a group is a chunk of lines which is what i was thinking it would be chunk line and voila Let's see, we probably have to import something. Huh. So let's see, I think, is that just line? No. Let's back out of that and try importing again. Uh, oh, it is lines. It was lines all along, and I couldn't. Uh, can't read my own typing. Um, so, okay, the types at least work now. Yay. Uh, um, and now I think we could probably undo what you had suggested, which was a really good suggestion. Thank you. That was actually super helpful. Um, and so this all compiles, and so now we're down to solving this problem. <sighs> um, so this didn't seem to need an into iter because it is an iterator. Um, I think chunks is just weird because um, it because it's in iter tools. I think they've had to do some stuff to make it work nicely with lots of collections, and so you have to explicitly turn it into an iterator. Um, uh, yeah, I think the the stir is essentially kind of buried inside the line. Um, and uh, it's like we want to turn the group into an array of three stir slices, actually, um, which I wonder if we can actually do that. Group dot um array chunks which is iterate over n elements of the iterator no that's that's not helpful oh it's actually just giving me all this stuff that um uh iter tools it yeah so so here are iter tools. We had chunks. Go to the latest version. 
So go to chunk. What can we do with a chunk? We can drop. We can not do a lot. Except for there's only a million things we can do here. But those aren't specific to chunks. Huh. So. Um, oh, can we do like collect? And maybe actually, I don't, I don't know why I'm trying to get these out of here. I think actually, if group is an iterator, that really does what I need to do because I ought to be able to map that. Um, so each, um, let's think about the problem for a second. We need to take each of these and turn them into a hash set. So we need to have something that turns a stir into a hash set, which was basically this. So, um, let's hope that we can, that this will do a thing. Um, s.chars.collect hash set, oops. This will probably fuss at me or not. Well, hot diggity. So that actually gives me a collection of hash sets. Come on, go away. Yep, we've got an iterator over hash sets. And now when we have an iterator over hash sets, we ought to be able to reduce them. And I uh, reduce reduce um, and reduce takes a single combining function which actually ought to just be hash set intersection Didn't like that. Type mismatch. Hmm. Expected function that takes two hash sets of characters, but got a function that takes two hash sets. Oh, and returns, no, oh, it returns another hash set, doesn't it? Intersection returns, oh, it returns an intersection type, which is, which can be used as a hash set. So we'd have to collect to turn that into Okay, so I think we're going to need to like explicitly have our two arguments um, first and uh, let's see. The, f the first one is what's been done so far and we'll want to take so far dot intersection um, I guess other would have been a better name. Other. Um, dot collect. Let 
Now, can it figure some things out? Uh, is not happy. Uh, one of them is a hash set of chars, and the other is references to chars. Well, that's awkward. And I assume is that it? actually is it that simple? No, I didn't think so. Yeah, borrowing that didn't help anything. Oh, poop. Um, so we have two hash sets of characters, and we need to turn the second one into a hash set of, well, why? Why does this have to be references? Well, they do say ampersand, but that doesn't work. Wah, wah. Okay. Expected reference to a hash set char, but found the hash set. Consider borrowing. I thought we did that. Oh, I removed it, I think. Okay, let's put that back. Okay. Value of type hash set char cannot be built from an iterator over references to chars. Hmm. Interesting. So the collect is being given references to characters and it doesn't know how to build a half set of chars out of those. How annoying. Um, hmm. I don't know. Um, Rust. Convert iter of references to iter of values. I feel like there's an easy way to do this. Um, oh, here we go. Cloned collect. Oh. Yeah, so cloned will convert the references into uh, values. And since our values are just chars, cloning is cheap and shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, this is useful when you have an iterator of a reference of T, but you need an iterator over T, which is exactly what we want. So, okay. Yay! Um, so now we have a single... hash set which ought to have a single um, shared item equals that and so shared item is an option of a hash set of chars why is it an option who here returns oh reduce returns an option okay but the iterator shouldn't be empty, so we should be able to then say um, 
let's pop you down there and you there and you there and dot with context um, format bang All right we need the format bang on that I think yes um, oh it's a closure format bang uh, actually it would be a bail because that's not dot well no 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 with it's because I don't only want it to happen if there's a problem um, uh, and reduce returns an option if the iterator was empty yeah so there uh, oh yeah format bang there were no lines in this group group and it's like I have no idea how to do display so let's hope it does debug oh it doesn't even do debug really well, that's not helpful. Um, we will just be terrible for now and just do that, which is not awesome, but it'll work. So now, whoa. Why do we have a result here? Oh, sure. Oh, and then I need the question mark to get rid of the result. And now I have a hash set. Yay! So this hash set should have just one item in it. Um, and so we Ought to be able to say dot next on that, and then another with context format bang. There were no, there was no shared item in the group. Uh, oh, I would have to turn that into an iter, dot iter, boom, ba, boom. Gotcha. So now that is, put a question mark here. It's a character. Yay. And now we can say let shared item equal star shared item. Um, whoa, ah, that didn't go well. What happened there? So that's okay. But if I undo that, the whole world blows up. Oh, a temporary value drop white borrowed. Whoa. Huh. So I actually need to give the group a name or bad things happen. That's interesting. Um, so so I need a let to give a name to the group. Actually, it's not even the group. It's the 
the result of the reduction um, so you're suggesting that I could clone here no maybe a clone in the wrong place Maybe clone here. No. Oh, you're thinking here. Oh, I'm so then I. No, I don't think. I don't think that's going to work. Because even if it did, I think it would just push the lump to another part of the rug. Um, I think the... So the problem is that the result of the reduction has... I wonder if the problem is that the hash set is an internal thing that 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 hash set that re reduce builds is the temporary value because that's what they want us to give a, a value to and that we then iter over it um oh yeah because we iter here and then call next and that next is pointing into the next is referring to the iterator that's pointing into a hash set but at the end of this statement that hash set and that iterator both disappear so that next is returning to that's pointing into that hash set but that hash set may not exist anymore. And that's what's, I think, ticking it off. So I think what we want is like shared items would be here. And then let shared item singular be shared items dot, you know, I'll just do that. Ah, now it's happy. Ah. So we now have a name that's holding that value and that's still in scope. So we can take an iterator from it, a next, which points into it, and all that stuff's still in scope. And so everything still wins. I think that's what's going on. And I'm going to reformat because that was getting kind of weird. Um, Okay, so now we know the shared item. Oh, we're finally going to get somewhere. Um, and uh, go back to the problem. We just need to compute the priority and add them up. Okay, and we know how to do that because we even have a function that does chart a priority. So we ought to be able to just say, um, oh, exactly this well I'll just steal it for now I feel like there's a function that we want to have but that we don't um, but that will do for the moment and now everything compiles he says in a slightly unconvinced tone. Oh, there's definitely some clippy action. Let's actually clean that up first and then we'll run it and see what happens. Okay, so there's some unused import. That's boring, but ought to be taken care of. Um, 
then oh, we could try copied instead of cloned on line 36. Oh. I don't. Interesting. So maybe that avoids the cloning. Probably doesn't matter given that we're just doing characters, but. Oh, yeah, so we didn't actually use the power of format because I couldn't. Um, group didn't implement debug. So we don't need the format bang part of the world. Pew. And hey, we, we run. So let's try running. Um, oh, no problem. So I'll be here for another 20 minutes and then I'll be done. So fingers crossed, day three will be done in here in a second. Um, and much thanks to you. And so greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, and I mean, I guess if I get hopelessly stuck, maybe I'll still be flailing on day three um when this ends but fingers crossed this will work and we might even start day four we'll see but thank you for being here i greatly appreciate it enjoy your evening your day whatever time zone you're in um and i look forward to talking to you later ciao let's hope that 2681 is the right answer please 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 Hey, it's the right answer. Good job. That is awesome. Um, and Clippy was happy. Yeah, Clippy's happy. And we should get rid of this chunk of code here. And yeah, I don't think that's terrible thing I think we're in pretty good shape so I'm going to commit this um, and we're going to start at least on number four which would be fun um, let's see so we added iter tools This allowed us to chunk nicely for day three, part two. Uh, and then this is the solution for day three, part two. Solve day three, part two in Rust. Boom. That's awesome. Um, I am going to merge that into main. Oh, I could just rebase. I don't really need to be merging. And now main's good. We'll make a branch for day four. Boom. And then what oh, no go away what is day four return to your advent calendar day four okay space needs to be cleared before the oh I, why don't we start by just grabbing the inputs get your puzzle input uh, come on Inputs, new file, day 04.input. Pew, pew, pew. Okay.
back to the problem. So, uh, what do we get going? Um, oh, we need the statement of the problem, don't we? Okay, so space needs to be clear, blah, blah, blah. Elves have been signed the job of cleaning up sections of the camp. Every section has a unique ID number, and each elf is assigned a range of section IDs. Um, they notice that some assignments overlap. To try to quickly find overlaps and reduce duplicated effort, the elves pair up and make a big list of section assignments for each pair. Your puzzle input. Okay. So here we got a pair of elves. The first elf was assigned sections two, three, and four. Well, the section was assi second was assigned six, seven, and eight. Um, and sometimes these overlap. So here they're both assigned section seven. Um, here, the first elf's assignment completely engulfs the second elf's assignment. Um, So we could have some bigger numbers, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the pairs notice that one of their assignments fully contains the other. Okay. So like the one I observed, for example, two through eight fully contains three through seven and six through six is fully contained by four through six. In pairs where one assignment fully contains the other, one elf in the pair would be exclusively cleaning sections that their partner will already be cleaning so these seem to be most in need of reconsideration. In this example, there are two such pairs. In how many assignment pairs does one range fully contain the other? Gotcha. Okay, so we need to take the pairs, parse them. Um, let's, see, let's go back and look at the actual inputs. So for each line, we'll split on comma. And then we'll split on dash and make a range or just a pair. You know, actually, do, does range do anything useful for us here? Um, Rust range overlap. Actually, let's just look for Rust range. What does a range know how to do? A range has contains. It does have an end and a start. Okay. So really, maybe that's all we need. Contains probably checks for a single item, which isn't helpful. Um, Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that does the con the sort of overlap part. But if we use the end start, we can do the math. It's not hard. Um, so we will then need to see if the first contains the second or the second contains the first. So we'll turn each of the pairs into a range. Um, uh, we could probably even implement, I wonder if we can implement from stir for range. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know, let's try. Well, let's see what happens. Um, okay, so day four, new file, day 04 part one dot rs. Um, so I'm going to steal this stuff because I don't want to have to think. Um, and we probably don't need hash sets. Well, we'll clean that up in a little bit. So this will be input day four. So we're going to process pairs. And 
we're computing the number of assignments. So it's not some report, so num overlapping assignments. Number of overlapping assignments is fun process pairs. Actually, pump. Let's grab that first part. So you can get down to here. Do and close, close brace. Okay, so everything compiles. That's a happy thing. Um, so each line is going to be a pair dot map process pair. And what is process pair going to return? It's going to, um, actually, why don't we say overlaps? And we're going to want to count those. So I feel like there's a thing that will. Yeah, we could just say filter. Um, and then dot count. And that would return our answer if overlaps exists. So overlaps is taking a line which is a stir slice and returning a bool aha does not um, oh yeah that's a reference to bool so I need to dereference it and that I need to wrap a okay around that because that doesn't, there's nothing there that fails unless overlaps fails. I don't know if overlaps is going to fail or not. Well, let's just put an okay around it for now. And if overlaps fails in some interesting way, then We'll deal with that. We deal with that. Okay. So that all seems good. Now, overlaps. We're going to need to split on. So split once would actually do us here. That's a comma? What is it? I don't remember now. It's a comma. So we could split on comma, and that would give us let first and second be that. Okay. Ah, so that can fail. How does split once fail? Probably fails if there is no instance of, yeah, if there is no instance of the thing. But we know that there will be, so we can just um, dot 
fail. Can we do that? A uh, failed explanation mark. Does that work? No. Uh, I think syntax. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so I think we have to do with context. Um, uh, and actually, since I'm not, yeah, with context um, format bang, there was no comma in the line, line, boom. I need to close paren and we're fussy. Why are we fussy? Oh, I didn't know. Why are we fussy? Oh, I didn't make a closure. That's why we're fussy. And why are we fussy? Oh, we don't, we're not returning result bool. And now this is a result bool. So we need to uh, Hmm. I can't question mark out of the body of the closure and the filter because that doesn't go to the right place. So how did we deal with this? I feel like we dealt with this like was it on day one? No, not the input. Not helpful. Um Was it by collecting? And the collecting took the result. Took a whole bunch of results and made a single result. Yeah, so I think we were able to do dot collect. Uh, um, result bool question mark. I'm going to get a single boolean. That's not what we want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's not gonna be what we're after. Um, oh, unless it's a vecabool. And then we could iter over that. And what we need two stars, really? Apparently, um, okay, so that's kind of gross. I feel like there's a better way of doing it and that we could avoid the collecting. Oh, there's a... Um, There's a map thing that just removes un um let's see iterator map is it flat map um Mm, 
or flatten. I feel like flatten will get rid of results. Let's try it. So I think, what if we say dot flat? Then too many here. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, is that what I want? Because I think then any result that is an error will get ignored rather than propagated. So I don't think that's really what I'm after now that I think about it. Um Rust. Extract result values from iter. Failing on error. Iterating over results. Ooh, this actually looks like maybe the right thing. It's pretty old. Result implements from iterator. Hmm. Do, 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 try for each. Oh. Try for each stops on the first error. Oh, I wonder if that would be useful. Um... Hmm. So try for each might be a thing. What does this tell us? Uh, ignore. So filter map would ignore the failed items. We don't want that. Map error calls a function with the error. So by adding that to the previous filter map, we can save them off to the side while iterating. That's not what we want fail the entire operation with collect which is what we had we could also partition don't really want to partition so i think collect is probably the thing to do i think that was probably the right thing to do and now we're back to and we did need the iter, right? Without the iter, I think, yeah. We had a vec, and that's just not going to work. Okay. Boom. So there we go with that. Oh, it's 9 o'clock. Um, do I fin try to finish this? What is left? So we've split. Oh, we're pretty close, I think. Um, I 
Well, actually, let's see quick. Can we impl from string for range? Import range, standard ops range. Only traits to find the current crate can be implemented. For, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So you can't add things to an existing type that is in the standard universe outside of you. Um, uh, if both pieces are outside of you, you can't do this. I think if we'd had our, if we made our own type. Oh, why am I collecting twice? Um, hi, Nathaniel Bumpo, by the way. Um, why am I collecting twice? Uh, am I collecting twice? Collecting here. And I'm collecting here so I can question mark this guy. So basically to turn the iterator of results into a single result and then question mark out. Um, but I don't see. Yeah, so in my this is just counting how many there are because that's all we need for this problem. Um, ah, recommendation to try do try fold. Okay, let me. That's probably over here somewhere. Try fold. Try fold. An iterator method applies a function as long as it returns successfully producing a single final value. Oh. The closure either returns successfully with the value that the accumulator should have for the next iteration, or it returns failure with an error value that's propagated back. Ah. Gotcha. So we could hmm. Yeah, how much do we want to build into the fold? Probably just Yeah, I was I had that concern that that I didn't really like making the vec in the middle. Like once I'd gone once I was iterating, I didn't want to like get to a vec and then convert back to an iterator. I that was not super exciting. So this would be an interesting alternative. Um so I can, in fact, is it as simple as dot trifold? And that takes the initial value. And I want, um, no, I really want to count here, don't I? So, So actually, I really want overlaps to be in the trifold because then I'll be able to fail. So I'm going to return zero and a closure that takes the current count and the next line and does what? 
if the line, let's see, you end up needing to implement your own count with fold. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I assume I'll have to do the counting myself. Um, but that's, I, if I just return the count, then I think I'm okay. Um, so, uh, if overlaps line question mark, then return current count plus one. Otherwise, return current count. And then I lose all the rest of this. So I'm just going to comment that out. And then this needs a close paren. Hey! That compiles. Um, interesting. So now the quest, so this is interesting because the question mark works here because the try folds is expecting this closure to potentially fail. And I've had trouble in the past where I wanted to do a question mark inside some kind of iteration. And like if you put it, try to put a question mark in the closure in a map, it doesn't do the right thing because you're not question marking out to the right place. Whereas here, it, since the trifold expects the function to potentially fail, the question mark actually works. That's pretty nifty. Well done, Nathaniel Bumpo. I like that. Um, and it's a little more explicit about the logic in ways that, I don't know, I could feel, I could go both ways on that. But um, I do, I think the, the question mark is much nicer there. I like that a lot. Um, yeah. Cool, okay. Um, Yeah, that is nifty. And so then if this fails, that return, that becomes an error that gets picked up by anyhow and tossed upstream. So very, very nifty. Okay, um, so uh, it is technically eight minutes after the end of tonight. Um, oh, let's see another suggestion. Ooh. So overlaps line question mark into, so converting a Boolean, it will attempt to convert a Boolean into a integer value and it must do false is zero and one for true, I assume. Um, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to pass on that suggestion. Um, it's Thank you for suggesting it. Actually, I, I hadn't thought about the fact that Booleans would convert like that numerically. Um, but, hmm. I, I think I agree with your comment that that's probably less readable. Um, so that's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to leave it like this. As much as that sort of super short version uh, would be cool, I think. Actually, I am going to capture it because... Um, that's the kind of thing I should uh, make a note of and remember. Um, 
uh, alternatively, thanks to Nathaniel Bumpo at Twitch, um, uh, current count plus overlaps line question mark dot into um, this converts a boolean to zero or one in the way we want but that gets kind of obscure Boom. But, whoa hey uh, Lo, 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 something didn't, maybe I hadn't saved before. I thought we were good, but, oh, question mark can only be used if we return result or option and the try type isn't that. Um... Mm. Um. Yeah, I agree that the you don't have the explicit if, which is generally I think something I would want to avoid. But I think it depends pretty critically on a kind of accidental. Do I think it's accidental? I mean, the fact that zero. False goes to zero and true goes to one. I, mean, I guess that's not really accidental. So, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that. I might might change that. But um, I think we got to figure out this problem first. Um, so I think the issue is that our function here doesn't return... Um, so it returns a try and this, the question mark wants a result or an option and a try isn't one of those things. So question mark is what is try? A rust try. Uh, no, that is not the thing we wanted. Um, there we want try. Uh, oh, hang on. Is try fold nightly only? No, it's not refers to try which is nightly only that's kind of weird um, Gotcha. Um, so do I need to do I need to say what the output is? Is that somehow relevant? Um, uh, Rust. Uh, question mark on try. That's going to be a tricky 
thing to uh, let's maybe try fold try fold try fold so that returns a result huh And is the problem that I'm not returning an OK value when I need to? Does try fold require? Oops. Um, yeah. Uh, so is this the problem that I'm not returning an okay on these guys? No. Uh, but maybe, uh, Oh, I, uh, do I have too many? Do I not now need this? Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So try fold is returning something that can be turned into a result. And the problem was I didn't have OKs here, but I did on the outside. And this needs them because it wants the body of the trifold to be OK or error in some ways. Um, yeah, I could put the OK around the if. OK. Boom, 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 boom. Now my um, formatting is probably a, really, it actually liked that formatting. That's weird, because that seems kind of gross. Um, but, okay, well that did a thing. Woo, so that's pretty cool, okay. Um, I like that trifold. And, you know, I wonder, maybe I'm just going to be okay with um, uh, maybe I'm just going to be okay. For now, I'm going to comment that out and say over um eh. Current count, that's what I needed. Current count plus overlaps line question mark dot um, into, uh, into, yeah. And we need to say what that needs to become into colon u size boom and it's not happy uh, oh what okay um yeah u size from i think looks like a nice option to me i like that there we go yeah
Interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that's, that is definitely one of the things about Rust programming is there's certain patterns where you can say, well, this might work. Um, but the nice thing is that the compiler will be very clear about whether it works or not. It may not be as clear as I would like about what the issue is, although actually it's a whole lot better than a lot of other compilers, but it is very adamant about what's acceptable and what's not. And so, you know, if it does compile, that does tell you a lot. Um, so that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, okay, I, we're 20 minutes after end time. So I'm actually going to wrap up there, um, I think. Um, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. That is very kind. Um, and uh, I will leave you fine folks to enjoy your evening or your morning or whatever random thing is going on. Um, I guess we could. I've not actually done this, um, but we could get all radical and weird and um, actually... Um, um, oops. Try a raid if there's anybody who's on. Winning. That's when I started and to collect ideas. There doesn't seem to be anybody that I follow that's on. Okay, well, skip that plan. Um, I don't want to chase around too much. I will say thank you to all of you wonderful people. Um, we will be back um, uh, Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m. CST with more Advent of Code. And Sunday, um, 10 to noon, evolutionary computation in Rust. And then Tuesday, uh, 10 to noon, um, more evolutionary computation in Rust. And then we'll be back here Wednesday doing more Advent, Advent of Code. So thank you all very much for your help. Um, lots of good suggestions and feedback. Very much appreciated. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening or day or morning or whatever's happening in your time zone. And I will hopefully see you later. Good night.